Uh, I'm Jeff, for those of you who, who I haven't met yet, I think I've met a lot of folks on the call, um, and I'm a partner here at Touch Lab. Um, I've worked alongside developers for, uh, at this point, over 25 years. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll talk to you a little bit about building a business case for KMP. Um, Carmichael is also joining me on the call and Carmichael, if you can go to the next, uh, go to the slide with your pretty face on it. Um, Carmichael, uh, runs business development here for us at, at touch lab, um, and leads a lot of the conversations that we're having with these, um, quite frankly, usually when we're having the conversations with, with larger companies. Um, and Carmichael, again, if you can move the slides forward. Um, can you hear me? I am muted. Yeah, I'm not muted. Carmichael, are you there, buddy? Yeah. Let's move the slides forward. Go to, uh, go to slide three. Yeah. Sorry about that. Cool. Listen, man, coronavirus time, work from home time. Um, right now, my, my top secret office door is locked, which is the door to my bedroom, so that my children don't come in and, uh, and greet you guys while we talk. Um, so we'll work through it. Uh, but Carmichael does run business development, uh, runs all these conversations. It is usually um, with some larger organizations. Um, and, uh, and, and we're just hoping to, to help you guys out today as you're having these conversations. Um, if you can go to the next slide, Carmichael, uh, what we're going to do today is, is, uh, next slide, <laughs> is figure out how to work the slides. That'll be the first thing we do today. But but look, man, the, our goal today is really to talk to you guys about you. And I'll, I'll just go ahead while Carmichael um, works out getting the slides going. Um, but the we know, and again, man, I've, I've worked alongside developers um, for a lot of years. Um, and we know that right now is a really exciting time for those of you that are, that are considering Kotlin multi-platform. Um, you know full well that this is one of those moments. Um, it's a, it's a career making moment. If you get to build anything at all with Kotlin multi-platform of, of any consequence, um, you are, you are making a name for yourself. Um, and we want to help you get to that place. And we know that if you are going to build something with Kotlin multi-platform, in most cases, you're going to need to um you're going to need to sell this um come on you might as well just run it from there if, if we're having trouble it's no problem just go to the next slide um one of the uh one of the things that uh that we know um as we have these these conversations with developers is that next slide if you can carmichael um is that most of the time you are you have to sell this to some group of people. Um, sometimes it's gonna to be to the iOS team. Sometimes it's gonna to be to the rest of the Android team. Maybe you gotta to sell to DevOps or the backend team. Um, we know that you've gotta kind of get through those conversations. Today we're gonna to focus, um, because we don't have a whole lot of time, we'll focus on having that conversation with your engineering manager. Um, and there's no real way to sell things effectively and to convince people of ideas effectively unless you have some empathy for them. So if you don't know the, the things that your, that your engineering manager is focusing on, you will have a much harder time convincing her uh, to move forward with, with this technology or any other technology. So Carmichael will kind of jump in and, uh, and go over uh, those a couple of examples of, of how to talk to your engineering manager and how to sell her on on these ideas definitely uh thank you jeff uh just like jeff was saying it's it's really understanding your engineering manager at their core right they're they're bombarded with so many different things so when they're looking to adopt new technology looking to uh take on any really new change they always have very clear and concise goals, right? So one thing we've noticed in talking to a lot of engineering managers is that there's really four key goals that they're focused on, right? 
those four goals are really understanding how this is an impact to the developer velocity, also rapid testing and feature parity, uh, minimizing tech debt, and then also obviously recruiting and retention because everybody wants the, wants the best and brightest, right? Now, once you understand them at their core though, the next piece of that is really understanding how, how those core objectives relate to the business objectives, right? So really when you're thinking about the business objectives, they're gonna be a couple of things that you need to understand, right? Uh, because you have to actually quantify what that looks like. So you're really gonna to have to understand the developer salaries. So your internal team salaries, uh, the number of developers and the discovery process, which I'll go into in, in, in a second, typically teams allocate a specific amount of developers um, during this discovery. Sometimes it can be two, sometimes it can be 10. It, it, it really varies by team. Um, and then, and then um, also the total number of developers actually on your team. So as a collective unit, um, and I'll kind of show you what that means here in a second. And then also um, how much time is actually being spent on this, um, all, on these, all, on this tech debt and errors um, between Android and iOS. So like I said before, I'm gonna paint this picture for you. Um, don't, don't worry, a lot of these numbers are extremely simple. Um, I wanted to make more so give you guys an idea of kind of what this looks rather than create a specific scenario. Uh, so I'll walk you through two, two different scenarios um, and then more than happy to talk with, with you all one-on-one -on, -one on very specific numbers. Uh, so first and foremost, one, one big thing that literally every every engineering manager is talking about right now, right? Is increasing their overall developer velocity, right? So right now we talk to a lot of companies who are looking to test KMP in their legacy application. And typically they're looking to refactor uh, a feature with their existing code, right? So for this example, um, the, no the, number of, the number of developers actually exploring uh, the technology will be 10 developers. The total within the organization will be 20 developers uh, total. And then their average salary is $100,000, right? So what do those numbers mean? And why am I telling you this, right? <laughs> so there's a couple reasons, right? So one is um, the exploring piece. Uh, the exploring piece is, is uh, really kind of an allocation of uh, developers who are really digging deeper into the technology, whether it be research, uh, digging into the actual code and uh, trying to get things to communicate with one another. Uh, we, we estimate that we've seen a lot of companies uh, dive into this and we find that it takes at least one year uh, to understand Kotlin multi-platform, right? And with Kotlin multi-platform, uh, the team, like the engineering manager that we're talking to, they understand that, hey, this is probably gonna be um, a year, right? So like I referred back to in my last slide, you typically have 10 developers that are working on this, um, in, this example, in, in, in this example, and their average salary is $100,000, right? So now that initial investment is a is million dollars in the exploring cycle, right? Now, after exploring, you also have to think through adoption, right? So how do you get this across the whole organization to the rest of the 20 developers or the remaining 10, right? So we also, we, we, we've also seen that it takes an additional year after that exploration phase to then um, implement across the organization. Now, the reason why teams are, are using this is because of the increased, de increased developer velocity, right? So that, so implementing this new technology we've seen has, has um, increased, increased the developer velocity by 50%. So I'll show you what these numbers mean here in a second, but as you see, you go from exploring million dollar investment, then you go to adoption, we're looking to increase developer velocity by 50% by implementing this across the entire organization, right? So now, you know, you figured everything out. Everybody's really comfortable with the technology. Now engineering managers are looking to scale the technology, right? So a lot of the engineering managers that we're talking to, they're all about like, all right, what is the impact long-term, right? What is this gonna look like in the future? Um, can we rely on this technology? So they're really thinking about this ROI in five-year increments, right? So. This isn't gonna be a quick fix. This is, a, this is a very strategic play by the engineering managers to do this uh, a, a long-term. So I'm sure you're saying, okay, this is, this is great, awesome. I, 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 know, I know that we're gonna go to the exploring phase. I know we wanna roll this out through adoption. And obviously we wanna scale literally everything we do, right? So from a numerical perspective, kind of what that looks like is from that exploring piece, 
you can automatically talk to your manager and say, hey, look, this is going to be um, X amount invested into this exploration piece. Now, for this example, that's going to be a million dollars invested, right? Now, with every investment, obviously, there has to be some kind of ROI, right? Everyone's looking for ROI. So that's where the ROI comes in this adoption phase, right? So total adoption, we, I said previously, we believe that it will increase developer velocity by 50%. Now, taking into account ramp up time for the additional 10 developers and so on and so forth throughout that uh, year, we estimate that total savings to be 750,000, right? So you invested a million dollars in year one, and now your total savings in year two is 750,000, right? So immediately you're already, you're already getting about 75% of your initial uh, investment back in that year two, right? But we know that, hey, this is a, this is a long-term and, and incredibly strategic play, right? So uh, as I said before, a lot of engineering managers are thinking about this in five-year increments, right? So I, I broke that out into, in, in, into scaling those savings. You see the three-year savings is three million, right? So immediately accounts for um, the, the, uh, the, the uh, a million invested early on. And then that five-year savings is five million, right? So as you see, like as you're building this business case, you have to think through each scenario. And I know there's different variables for different companies, but just wanted to at least show you how each compartment looks and kind of how you can quantify um, these, these different aspects of the business, right? So that's, 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 that's how we're thinking about things in regards to developer velocity. We ultimately look at developer velocity as save time, right? So that's how we're quantifying this. And so that save time can be allocated into a wide range of different uh, other aspects of the business, but that's, that's how we're looking at this from a developer, uh, a developer velocity standpoint. So next, the big, <laughs> a real big thing is we, every, <laughs> every engineering manager we talk to wants to talk about reducing error rates, right? Even, even Tidelift, right? Uh, 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 they, they anticipate 35 to 50% of developers' time is actually spent on bug, bug fixes, right? So estimate, there's an estimated 15 to 50 errors per 1,000 lines of delivery code, right? So I know you guys want to probably spend <laughs> your time doing much more, <laughs> much more interesting things. And so that's another sales point, right? Um, and so kind of what that looks like in the reducing area, error is when you think about kind of how you're, how you're um, unifying these code bases with Kotlin multi-platform, right? You, you have more shareable code across Android and iOS, right? So this, in this example, we're going from 100% siloed native, uh, going from 100% siloed native code across, uh, across 10 developers, right? So say you have 50% shareable code within this, 50% shareable code within your application, we, we, we estimate a 25% increase in developer velocity. And this is just on reducing the errors, right? So that total cost savings, it's $250,000 per annum, right? So to give you kind of another thing to compare that against, and I think this is where a lot of people are trying, trying to get to, is how do we continue to have more and more shared code, especially when you're looking at, at a technology like Kotlin Multi-Platform, right? So if you can get to 80% shareable code across your application, that's $400,000. First off, that's a 40% increase in developer velocity. It's, it's humongous. And that's just, in, that's just in reducing the errors, right? That's another $400,000 in savings in addition to the initial developer velocity that I showed you guys previously, right? So just wanted to at least show you guys how not only does it look, how, not only how this looks from a developer velocity standpoint, but also reducing errors as, as well, right? Now, um, I want to kind of summarize this. I know Jeff, uh, you wanted to jump in here and uh, kind of talk through some of the major take takeaways of this, right? So. Sure. Um, the and again, look, these are these are very simplified examples. Um, the numbers in your org are going to be very different, but you know the numbers in your org. That's the the benefit, right? And and as we've had these discussions, we have had multiple discussions at this point where we're not actually in the organization selling um, to the engineering manager, but we're helping engineers from the community 
um, sell to their EMs. And these are some of the examples that we used with them. Obviously, those numbers were accurate and they, they reflected what was going on in their organizations. Um, but in this case, we wanted you to see that it's, it's fairly simple to go from this technology is great to this technology translates to the financial goals that you have to hit, right, as an EM. Um, and that's the, the first key, right? Empathy. Um, you want to have some understanding of, of what your engineering manager has to do as their goals. You know, if she has to think about the ROI as well as how great the tech is, then it's, it's super important that you also are thinking about the return when you're having that conversation with them. Um, and, and your organization may be different. Just want to, again, point that out. If in your organization, if you're a smaller org and you're five developers and, and, and the main uh, situation for your, for your EM is, is that uh, recruiting is a big deal, then the fact that the technology is hot right now, you may want to talk about the growth curve of Kotlin. And, and you know, that may be the numbers that you tie yourself to. So empathy, think about what your engineering manager has to go through. Then there's dollars in tech. Um, again, you've got to quantify it. So if it's not uh, dollars at your organization, it's recruiting, you can still quantify that. What's the, the lowered cost of recruiting if you're building something that's amazing? Um, and then the two examples, right? The, the developer velocity, um, is a really good one. And we, we included these examples because again, they, they're the larger percentage of conversations that we're having. So we hope that they would be more helpful to you. You can translate the improvements um, in developer velocity to financial returns. Um, in some cases before year one, um, but definitely beyond year one. And then reducing errors, sharing logic um, and reducing the chance of introducing errors can be boiled down to a financial impact. So just keeping in mind what the engineering manager that you are trying to help see the benefits has to think about will make a huge difference in your conversations. Um, and we, we, we hope that that's been helpful to you. We, we do have these conversations with a lot of our friends in the engineering community. Um, if you need advice, definitely shoot us an email, hit us up on the, on the Kotlin Slack um, if we can help, we absolutely will. Um, and, and for the engineering managers, obviously, that are thinking this through and, and need to make a case to your management, um, please reach out. We, we'd be happy to talk to you and, and help you through that.